So I was reading a article in Realtor.com talking about what myths are hurting home buyers and sellers in the market today. One myth being we're going to be a housing crash just like it was in 2008. And then another one is like sellers have such great interest rates, they'll never sell their homes. Well, I'm be either debunking those myths or actually maybe cooperate them. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Patrick Don of XP Realty, part of the Johnson Group here in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. And today, like I said, I'm gonna be going over an article I read on realtor.com titled, Stop Believing, Four Housing Market Myths Hurting Today's Buyers and Sellers. Now I'm gonna tell you, they call these all myths, but there's some that I would probably uh, corroborate that they're not actually myths, they're actually true. So. Uh, stay tuned for that. And then after that, we're going to be talking about the housing statistics for the three hottest markets in our area, Savannah, Pooler, and Richmond Hill. If you get any value from this video, do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, share this video with your family and friends. Maybe you're looking to buy or sell a home, or maybe they just want to be informed about the housing market in our area. But let's just get into this article, okay? So, Stop believing for housing market myths hurting today's buyers and sellers. And the first one, this is the one that catches the headlines, right? The housing market is going to crash just like it did in 2008. Now, this is a really, if you are not familiar with what happened in 2008, I would suggest that you read the book, um, the Big Short, fantastic book, okay? They did a movie about it. I think the movie did a, such a good job about explaining what happened, but the book, phenomenal. Back then, there was a, I'm just gonna kind of summarize it really quick, but there was a, there was predatory lending practices, getting home, uh, potential home buyers who couldn't afford to buy a home, actually, I would say, so not potential home buyers, but getting people that can't really afford to buy a home, into uh, adjustable rate loans, right? Introductory as low as 1%, maybe even less, principal only loans, stuff like that. Um, and then selling those loans off on the secondary market to mortgage backed securities, okay? And then by the time the mortgage adjusted, the buyers could not afford to pay for their homes anymore, causing foreclosures flooding the market with cheap and easy homes. And I hear that from buyers when I'm talking to them. Well, I'm just gonna wait till the market crashes because there's no way that the housing market prices go up that fast that it's gonna stay like this. It's probably gonna crash. I'm gonna catch it on the downswing, sweep up one of those great deals on the market because the housing market's insustainable. Now, I agree with you. The housing market prices going up so fast does seem unsustainable. And at some point it's gotta stop, right? At some point it's gonna level out, I assume. But the housing market crash, I just don't see, because we have a very, very different problem. Back then, flooded with foreclosure houses, right? People losing their jobs because of the recession. So other foreclosures, not just uh, due to subprime lending, put a lot of houses out there for people to buy. That's not the case right now. As a matter of fact, we got quite the opposite problem right now. Right now, we just don't have enough inventory. And I'll, sh I'll show it to you in the numbers when we go through the stats, but we're, we're sitting at pretty much 50% of what the market was as far as inventory is concerned in 2018 when I started to now, we are half the inventory. So. That's, there's no way there's going to be a ton of short or foreclosures on the market because most home buy or home owners right now have 50% uh, equity in their homes. So it's not going to be possible to get a steal in the market right now because most, you know, if, if somebody lost their job and they had to sell, it wouldn't be at foreclosure. They just sell it at market price. So I would say this myth that the housing market is about to crash like 2008 is absolutely busted, false, not true. So that one, no good. All right, here we go. The second myth they talk about, 
Owners have such good rates, they will never sell. Now this one, on the other hand, I think this myth is not really a myth. This is actually kind of true. And I'm speaking for our area. When I'm talking about the Savannah area, I'm talking about, you know, from Hinesville, you know, to Savannah, Richmond Hill, Guyton, Rinkin, Tybee, all our surrounding area. This is probably true. You got to think about it. When they bought their home or when you, when, when, most people bought their homes during the rates that were very low. They all, most Americans, 90%, I believe, have interest rates lower than what is on the market today. And today's interest rates, and I got this from Mortgage News Daily, um, the 30-year fix is 6.58. The FHA is 6.15. And the VA is 6.17, right? And if someone bought their home... You know, think about this. If I was thinking to move up, for instance, right? I wanted my move up home. Maybe I'm in my second home. I want to get to my third home. Or maybe I'm in my first home. And I want to go to my second home. This I want, from, I want to go from my starter home to my move up home, right? So, but they have a 2.75% interest rate, right? Now, maybe, so say if they have, they bought the home three, $350,000, right? A 2.75% interest rate. Okay, and they want to sell the home and go buy their next home. Maybe it's a five hundred dollar, a five hundred thousand dollar, maybe six hundred thousand dollar home, right? Well, they could probably put their house on the market, depending on how long they've had it for, probably for a hundred thousand dollars more than they bought it. Well, they can put that into buying their next home and bring the purchase price down. But what are they going to do about that difference in interest rate? You're talking about almost three, more than actually three percent interest rate change, makes it very difficult for people that have those rates to sell their home. I mean, it's very difficult to bite that bullet even to step up. They say, well, you know what? I'm just gonna wait a little bit to make sure that the rates come down a little bit closer so I'm not taking such a huge chunk. But you also have to remember, we live in a very transient community. A lot of military here. We're talking about, we have 15,000 military that's here, active duty. And then you got their families of 16,000. Then you got the contractors. How many contractors? 4,000 DOD civilians, 1,200 contractors, okay? And they are moving. You know, you're talking about just in the active duty, they move every three years. So you're talking about, they're gonna be moving every three years. So that's 5,000 families moving every three years. So there's houses available. And then also other people move for jobs and things like that. So there's houses on the market but of course, the inventory is way depressed. So yes, I would say that this myth is actually not a myth. This is true. It is harder to find houses out there, which is causing, keep causing the house prices to rise. So this myth is not a myth. This is true. Owners have such good rates, they are staying put. And you see it in the numbers. And I'm gonna show you that when we go through the numbers uh, of the three hottest markets in our area. The next myth, as rates rise, home prices will drop. Ugh. That's, you know, that would be simple terms that you would think that'd be intuitive, right? If the interest, if the cost of buying a home goes up because interest rates are up, you would think that the home prices would come down. But once again, it comes back to that inventory level, right? When I came into the real estate, um, became a real estate agent in 2018, okay? It was more of a neutral market, I would say. Compared to what we have now, it's totally, totally different, okay? There was twice as many homes on the market, okay? There was haggling and negotiating. Um, buyers would routinely get home, or home, uh, home warranties, routinely be able to negotiate closing costs. You know, recently it's kind of turning more that way as the market starts to stall, but previously, you know, five, six, 10, 12 offers are on a house as soon as it hits the market. But now, as it starts to, you know, as we start to, the buyers are not, not biting anymore with these high prices and they're starting to lay back, um, you'll start to see negotiating again. But 
this is definitely false. As the rates rose, the prices of homes just rose as well. So you see that in numbers, and like I said, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'll refer back to this part when we go through the numbers about inventory. But yeah, inventory is way depressed. As soon as those inventory rises more, then they'll give more, maybe it will pull those prices down. But I'll tell you, if you are looking to buy, right? Sellers are starting to get nervous. Their homes are on the market longer than they're used to. Back in the day, home on the market one day, contract the next day, boom. You know what I'm saying? Now sellers are like, my home's been on the market for 20 days, what is going on? They're starting to panic a little bit and they're starting to concede. So maybe now's the time for your buyer. Give me a call, we can talk about your options. But there's also, and I don't want you to leave until we get to this, but there's special interest rates going on in new construction to 3.99%. I'm gonna tell you about it later. You don't wanna leave until you hear about this because finally cracking under 4%, this could be that time for your move up buyer to actually move up. So stay tuned for that. But I would say, that, that myth is totally, totally a myth. That is not true. The, the, as the rates rise, the home prices did not drop. And then the last myth that this article talks about is good credit buyers are subsidizing buyers with bad credit. There was an article, I think it was a year, a year and a half ago, something like that, um, where the Wall Street Journal had put out an article saying that people with good credit have got to pay f um, fees for people with bad credit that don't have to pay these fees good good credit people are paying for bad credit people and all this stuff and it was a big uproar went to congress everybody's mad but they just didn't read the fine print and what is actually going on it had nothing to do with credit okay fannie and freddie mac governed sponsored enterprises their mission is to make home affordability easier for first-time home buyers okay they was to make it more accessible. It had nothing to do with their credit. It has to do with being a first time home buyer and getting into the market. As a matter of fact, me and Christina in our last video that we that I did talked about these seven pathways to home ownership. One of those pathways was exactly what we're talking about here. See, this, what actually happened was the FA, uh, FHA loans require an upfront PMI payment of 1.75. And then PMI after that, which is mortgage insurance, which doesn't help the buyer, it helps the lender to insure the loan if the buyer defaults. Well, they eliminated that for this pathway loan and for first time home buyers. That was the fee that everybody was in an uproar about. And you can, if you're a first time home buyer or you haven't owned a home in three years, you qualify for this regardless of whether or not your credit is high or low, you qualify to get those fees waived if you go through this pathway loan, which like I said, watch the video at the end. It's gonna show you exactly how to do that or give you information to call Christina Boyette who can definitely help you out with that. So this is another myth that I don't know how this came into existence. People getting an uproar about, you know, how poor people or you know, people with better off are paying for poor people. This was a total myth. So I thought the article was interesting. I didn't think all of them were myths. Obviously, most of them were, but not all of them. So it's a good article. I'm gonna link all that down below. But now let's get into the stats for Savannah, Pooler, and Richmond Hill. Now we're gonna go over the stats. We're gonna talk about the average sales price and median sales price. The good thing about me showing you uh, through the InfoSparks portal right here, um, is that I can actually show you the median home sales prices and the average, just so you can kind of get an idea. Whatever number you like better, you know, up to you. But I just want to give you guys the ability to see that, so I think it's pretty cool that I get to do that. Um, but also, I need you to bear with me. I have some stomach issues, gas issues, so if I burp or something like that, I'm trying to get it fixed through the doctor. It's been an arduous, painful process, but we're going to get there. It's not gonna stop me from doing my videos, so we're gonna keep doing them. Just bear with me if I belch or something like, please forgive me, okay? But here we go. So now we're gonna talk about the sales price. And I'm just gonna go through, actually, I do, you know, typically I do all three of them all at the same time, but I'm actually gonna run through all Savannah's numbers, all of Pooler's numbers, and all of Richmond Hill's numbers uh, separately. 
so that you can kind of see it here on the chart, which I love. InfoSparks is great, man. It just really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff that's going on in the market. That's why I love looking at it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start out with the median sales price. So last year, July, oh, we only got it for one year. Okay, I'm actually gonna change the view on this to five years so I can, because there's gonna be the inventory part I was talking to you about during the, the myth stuff which the five years will actually give you a better, actually, I'm just gonna max it out. Let's go max. I think that gives us out to 2017. Yeah, 2017, so. All right, so last year, 2023 in July, the median home sales price for Savannah, Georgia was 331,024. This year, 365, up by 10%, okay? And that's the median. Now let's go to the average. Now you see here, this, which is, Keep in mind here, ready? 331 and 365, okay? Watch when we go to the average. It's gonna blow your mind. Blow your mind. Well, my, it blew my mind, excuse me. The average home sales price in Savannah, 463, 244 last year. This year, 511,088, up by 10% still. So the difference between the median and the average, if you don't know, uh, median is going to take all the numbers going on in Savannah and then pull that middle number. Okay. In the average, it takes them all and then average them. So that's the difference. Okay. So now we're going to go new listings on the market. Okay. New listings. As of last year, July, there was 426 new listings that came to the market this year, 460. So more new listings come to the market up by 8%. All right. Now homes for sale. This is interesting. And this is what I was talking about, the inventory, right? So last year, I would say 2018, July, because that's when I came into real estate. There was 1,925 homes on the market in Savannah. Now it's only 1,144. You see the big difference right there? And if you go further back, it's even it was even higher than that. So we're almost half the amount of homes on the market that there was. Okay, but if you want to look at last year in July, last year July was 792. This year is 11.44, up by 44%. We're going to talk about why the the homes for sale are rising um, here in a second. So let's talk about closed sales in Savannah. All right, the closed sales in Savannah last year was 307. This year, 281. So down by almost 9%, okay? Now, days on the market, this is kind of, this is where we're gonna talk about how the closed sales going down, the homes for sale going up, and here's the reason why. Days on market last year in July was 29 days on the market, and this is the median. This year, 41 days on the market, up by 41%. Days on market, up by 41%. When you look at the average, the average days, and this is all, like I said, we already talked about that number. I'm not going to get into it. So last year is 44 days average. This year, 52 days average. So if you're selling a home in Savannah, this kind of, this is actually, <laughs> when I was selling, like here, look at the days on market when I came in uh, July. Hold on, it's July. When I came in, when I came into real estate, the days on market was 96 days. So if you sold a home as a real estate agent in 52 days, everybody's like, man, that guy's a rock star. Holy cow. How did he pull that off? He probably had a great listing. Maybe the seller listened to him. They priced it right. Wow, right? But now when you say 52 days to people, they're like, what is happening? You know, after the 20th day, they don't get an offer. People start, sellers are starting to get a little shaky. Back in the day, that was normal. You'd be on the market for two months and you was like, never heard of, you, you haven't got an offer, or maybe you haven't secured one yet. So, you know, it's all relative to where, with the times that you're living, but as you see here, days on market are creeping up 52 days. So if you're in Savannah and you have a house on the market and you're worried, look at the average days on market that's going on right now, 52 days. So if you have been on the market for two or three weeks and you haven't heard anything yet, just know, the market has shifted a little bit. Your house is going to be on the market for a little bit longer. Now let's go price per square foot. All right. Another indicator of price. <laughs> okay. So last year in July, it was $210 per square foot in Savannah. There's the median. 
this year 228 up by almost 9 percent then we're going to do the average just for fun 227 and then uh last year and then 249 up by 10 percent so the average and the, the the prices are just going up days on market's going up you know closed sales going down um, so you got to understand your home's going to sit on the market a little bit longer if you're selling your home in Savannah. And it's also almost the same in the other markets as well. In every market, in Pooler, days on market up by 33%. In Richmond Hill, up by 13%. So that's going to bear out in the numbers. So let's do Pooler next. Pooler. And remember, the price per square foot number is your estimate. So if you are looking to uh, get a roundabout number where your house sits against the market take that number multiply it by um your square footage all right here we go now we're going to pooler pooler we're gonna go median first <coughs> excuse me all right last year in july 379,500 this year 361,000 down by almost five percent interesting yeah let's check the average out average july Average was 405.669. This year, 402.123. Down, barely. A little bit. Piquito. All right. Now, new listings. New listings. Last year in July, 73 new listings on the market. This year, 76, up by 4%. All right. Homes for sale. Okay. There's that number that I was telling you about. It's depressed. Last year, there was 141. On the market this year 20201 like i said this sitting a little bit longer as you add new listings on homes that are already on the market it keeps getting more and more on the market okay close sales last year july 96 this year 87 down all right days on market let's see where we're at on that one july 50 days on market this is the oh we did the me See, I wanted to use the median first. Can I give the shock factor? Oh, it's too late. All right, here we go. <laughs> Last year in July, 33 days on the market. This year, 44 days on the market. Average, let's see what that is. Average last year, it was 50 days on the market. This year, average 58 days on the market. So once again, taking longer to sell in Pooler than it used to. So be aware of the days on market. It's not abnormal to sit almost two months now, okay? All right, price per square foot in. We're gonna go with the median. In Pooler, July last year is 187. This year, 191, up by 2%. The average is 190, and this year is 197, okay? All right, now let's do some Richmond Hill action. Richmond Hill. And if you guys want to see other markets in our area, such as Rankin or Guyton or Port Wentworth or any of these other areas, Tybee maybe, if that's what you guys want, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. I can pull the numbers just like you can pull, you know, the any other numbers. I can pull them all right here. If you want to see Brunswick, I can do that if you want to. Please don't do Brunswick. I don't cover that area. Okay. I can refer you people down there, but I'm not going down there. All right. So here we go. Though, I would say if you haven't been to Brunswick, St. Simon's Island, oh, fantastic place. You got to go down there. If you live in the area, you've been to St. Simon's, great seafood. It's awesome. All right, let's go with the median home sales prices. Last year in Richmond Hill, we had a 406595 This year, 429245 Prices are up by almost 6%. If you go average price, okay, which in Richmond Hill, it's kind of almost the same. It's, it's strange. Right, but it's nearly the same. You know, there's some shocking numbers when you go to the other, but here, not as shocking because it's been pretty consistent. So July last year is 473,048. This year, 339,255, down by 7%. All right, now new listings. Okay, July last year is 84 new listings. This year, 94 new listings, up by almost 12%. Okay, and then homes for sale. Now, last year in July, there was 214 homes for sale in Richmond Hill. This year, 305 homes for sale, up by 
40, almost 43%. Okay. Closed homes, closed sales, July. Last year, closed sales, uh, 111. This year, 88. Down by almost 21%. Right, and that's like I said, this all feeding the same narrative. Every market is almost feeding the same narrative. So as you can see, when I was talking about Savannah and Pooler, also apply to Richmond Hill. Okay, days on market, you will see. Okay, July last year, 31 days in the market, median this year, 35 up by almost 13 percent. The average last year was 55. This year, 47, so actually down by almost 15%. But 47 days still on the market. That's, a, that's you know, a lot longer than people are used to. So if you are used to your homes going quick, right, if you're still in that mindset when you're about to list your home, you could be putting yourself in a bad headspace, I think. You know what I'm saying? I, I think a lot of times people have this expectation, right, that, oh, the house is going to sell quick. But when we're looking at these averages, you got to pay attention to it. You can't think, my house is different. It's going to sell fast. Don't put yourself in the headspace. Be prepared. These numbers are, this is really why I do what I do. To get you informed before you either buy or sell so you understand what's happening. I don't want you to go out there blind. I don't want you to go out there thinking, oh, my house is going to sell in two days when the average is saying otherwise. You just want you to be informed. And that's why I do this. I'm hoping that I give you guys a ton of value when I do this, okay? Um... And if not, if there's anything else you guys want to see stuff numbers wise, just let me know. I, I'm, I'm here to help as much as possible. Okay. Price per square foot. Let's do it. Okay. In July, there's $183 per square foot. Your estimate number. That was last year. This year, 198 up by 8%. And we'll go to the average 198. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Last year, $200 per square foot. This year, 202 average. Up by 1%. So those are the housing stats for the area. Uh, but I don't want to forget to tell you about the 3.99% interest rate that DR Horton is given in Woodland Trail, which is in Richmond Hill. They've got, I think, 12 more homes left till they close out the community com completely. So they're giving out 3.99%. Whew, what a great deal. If, they can, if the homes can close by September, all of them in Richmond Hill can close before September. They're ready to rock and roll. And then they got some in Cobblestone Village, which is a new community out in the Bloomingdale area. It's right up 204. Um, it's by the Palm. It's a great location. They're also given a 3.99% interest rate. So if you're interested in getting into uh, your move up home, like we had talked about, looking for that interest rate that's below 4%, now is your opportunity to get it and give me a call. If you have a question about those, give me a call at 912-657-3544. And then I'd love to get you in touch with one of their representatives, get you qualified and get you at home. So if you're looking for it, let me know. Also, look, once again, if you got any value from this, do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, share this with your family and friends. And I really appreciate it. If you're watching this video at this point, I love you so much. Thank you so much. You guys are the reason why I keep coming back and doing this. And thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.